Homesickness is the strangest of emotions. You spend years saving up and longing for adventure, and then when you're finally there on the other side of the planet, all you can think about is home. It was November 2017, and it had been a whole month since I'd packed my bags, said goodbye to my cat, and then flown halfway around the world with my girlfriend Danielle. We'd explored Singapore with its wonderful gardens and rooftop infinity pools, and Krabi in southern Thailand, island hopping from one incredible tropical beach to the next. Even just the previous day, we'd climbed to a cliff-top golden temple in the middle of the rainforest, guarded by fierce and angry monkeys. And then in the evening, we'd explored Krabby's night markets, with its deep-fried insects, liquid nitrogen ice cream, and all manner of counterfeit jeans, trainers and electronics. This really was what it meant to be a 20-something traveller, free of responsibility and exploring parts of the world I used to only dream about. But I guess that's the thing with homesickness. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. I wasn't really missing home at all. No offence, Mum and Dad. But I was missing my cat, Reggie. And so the following day as we left Krabi and flew to Chiang Mai, right in the north of Thailand, our first port of call was what is quite possibly the happiest place on earth. The Cat Cafe. We were swarmed in the best possible way. I felt like a king. It's fair to say that we left that place leaving no cat uncuddled and both thoroughly recharged after some feline affection. Well that was amazing, that was exactly what we needed. And so the next day we set out to do something a bit more cultural and meet some decidedly larger animals. So today we've come down to the Joining Elephant Sanctuary. It was about an hour's drive outside of Chiang Mai. Um, and as you can see, they've got us in the traditional clothes, which are super funky. Um, we're about to go for a trek through the jungle with the elephants. And then a bit later on, we're gonna feed them and bathe them. So it should be a lot of fun. Here Daniela is in her clothes. Looking really cool. And this is Matthew the elephant. He's actually huge. It's, to be honest, it's quite scary being right by them because they're so big. In fact, Matthew was a she, and it's pronounced something more like Machu. But even female Asian elephants can reach up to four meters tall, weigh up to five tons, and eat almost 150 kilograms of food every single day. Yeah. <laughs> You're a boy. And yeah, standing right beside one can be really quite intimidating at first. But it looked like Danielle's persistence had earned her a new friend. Nowadays, it's very rare to find wild Asian elephants in Thailand. There remain somewhere between 1 and 3,000 individuals, compared to 300,000 a century ago. The animals are facing monumental threats from habitat loss and illegal poaching. Deforestation in particular is of grave concern, leading the elephants to live in much closer proximity to farmland and villages, which in turn results in human-elephant conflict. The overwhelming majority of the remaining elephants now live in sanctuaries such as this one. And whilst I acknowledge that they're often more of a tourist attraction than a sanctuary per se, we at least made sure to choose one that treated the elephants kindly and that didn't permit riding them, a practice that has been shown to be disastrous for their health. And the elephants had no scars, an indication that they'd been wounded with hooks during the torturous training process, which many companies use to beat them into obedience. So whilst it's sad that elephants like these aren't wild, it's the kind and caring sanctuaries like this that are keeping their species alive.
So apparently there's another group of elephants about to pass through and these are meant to have a tiny little baby who's four months old so we're quite excited, hopefully we're going to see him. They had been truly wonderful, but unfortunately it was time to say goodbye to the elephants. A couple of days later, we headed into the mountains, or more specifically, Thailand's tallest mountain. At 2,565 metres in height, it's almost double Ben Nevis, the UK's highest mountain. But it doesn't really feel like it. We were taking a minibus to the top. No one really climbs this mountain. It's an incredibly gradual incline, and at no point is it craggy or sheer, so you'd get nowhere near the same experience as climbing a normal mountain. Our first stop along the way was Sirathan Waterfall, a 40 metre fall that provided a nice break from sitting in the minibus. Next we got to see a traditional Thai village. This was a real Karen Hill tribe, but the whole visit did seem a little contrived, like some sort of human zoo for the benefit of tourists. Even still, we got to see them growing coffee, drying the beans, and then got to try some of it afterwards. It was certainly a good insight into their lives. Most of what we'd seen of the country so far had been in cities or large towns. This was our first proper look at a more rural way of life. Wachirathan waterfall followed, and this was much more impressive than the one from earlier, at 80 metres in height, although made up of many sections. We both got soaked. As I've said, the route up Dointhanon is a very gradual incline, so it came as something of a surprise to be suddenly passing through the clouds. It didn't feel like we were anywhere near high enough, but before long, we'd reached the mountain summit. And again, it's not some craggy, towering peak, but more of a slightly underwhelming plateau, carpeted with tropical cloud forest. So this is the highest point in the whole of Thailand and it's very wet and rainy. But there we were, at the very top of Thailand. And our final stop was what is by far Doyenthanon's most impressive landmark, the King and Queen Pagodas. The Brown Pagoda was built first in 1987 to celebrate the 60th birthday of the King and then the purple one followed five years later for the Queen's 60th. They're set amongst some really lovely gardens, with koi ponds, bridges, and a wonderful view down the slope of the mountain. It's one of those places that seems like the fictional setting of a fairy tale. These magnificent, ornate pagodas, deep in the clouds of Thailand's tallest mountain. It's gorgeous here. Our time in Thailand was coming to an end. Tomorrow we'd head to Chiang Rai, a city a couple of hours drive away, and then it would be down towards the beating heart of the country, Bangkok. I hope you like long train journeys.